Hello everybody, I am Boofire191. In Gundam, Xeon has a really bad track record when it comes to committing genocide, be it Operation British, Operation Stardust, the colony drop on Dublin, or Shar's entire plan. With that said, there is one Neo Xeon group that stands out due to how different it is, that group being the Sleeves from Gundam Unicorn. In fact, the Sleeves are so different from all the other Neo Xeon factions that I'm of the mindset they are more Ayug than Xeon. Or to put it another way, I believe the Sleeves are the more pragmatic second coming of Ayug. For the sake of going forward, I want to state that I am not including the Sleeves from Gundam Narrative since that hasn't come out in the West yet. This is solely about the group from Unicorn and their plans for the future. Now before I can talk about the Sleeves, I need to explain what Ayug was and the context surrounding them. From this point forward, there are going to be spoilers for Zeta Gundam and light spoilers for Gundam Unicorn. Ayuk, the anti-Earth Union group. Humanity's last hope for turning back the downward spiral it had found itself on. A hope which was snuffed out in the wake of Operation Maelstrom. The operation, which saw the idealistic group coming toe-to-toe -to -toe with not only the remnants of the Federation's elite military force known as the Titans, but with a remnant Xeon faction made up of fanatics from the asteroid space station known as Axis. Outmanned and outgunned, Ayug took the fight to both of these groups and was ultimately victorious, though at a great cost. As the dust settled, the Titans had been utterly destroyed, and only one ship was left in Ayug's fleet the ship that started it all, the Argama. However, those who founded the group, those who had idealistic hopes for the future, had either perished like Blex Forer, or turned into monsters and perverted what Ayug stood for like Shar Osnabal. Ayug may have won the group's conflict, but in the end it ultimately destroyed the organization, though it still existed in name only during the first Neo Zeon War. Ayug was made up of the best and brightest from every facet of humanity, and had three major goals. The first was to defeat the Titans. This was their initial goal, and is the only one they were able to complete. Their other two, on the other hand, were much grander in scope. The first was to reform the Earth Federation, and snuff out the corruption which had entrenched itself into every facet of the government. The second was to get every human off of Earth and into space. The main reason for this was so the planet could heal from all of the damage humanity had inflicted upon it. However, the other reason, which was held by individuals such as Shar, was so that all of humanity could begin its evolution into new types. Ayug failed to achieve its two grander goals, and by the time of the first Neo Zeon War, it had become a shadow of its former self due to the only ones still alive, excluding the crew of the Argama, being middle managers who joined for selfish reasons, and corporate interests such as Wong Li. Ayug's legacy may have lived on in Bright Noah and his organization known as Londo Bell. However, if the events of Hathaway's Flash are anything to go by, Londo Bell wasn't able to achieve much of anything in regards to Ayug's grander goals. It is for this reason, dear viewer, why I believe the Sleeves are more Ayug than Neo Zeon. Or to put it another way, this is the reason why I believe the Sleeves are the second coming of Ayug. The Sleeves had two major goals, with the first tying directly into the second. They wanted to find this MacGuffin, known as Laplace's Box, a MacGuffin which is said to determine the fate of the Earth Federation, a MacGuffin which is never spoken about in any other series before Unicorn. Sorry, not really a fan of that part of the series. The reason they want Laplace's Box is so they can use its contents as leverage against the Federation to delay or outright prevent the dissolution of the Republic of Xeon, a colonial government which has more autonomy than any other colony. The reason for doing this is so the Sleeves can use the Republic of Xeon as their centerpiece for the side co-prosperity sphere, an economic alliance made up of all of the space colonies known as Sides and the Moon. The reason why the Sleeves want to create this alliance is so they can exploit a critical flaw which has been created in the wake of several Neo Xeon Wars, that flaw being Earth's dependence upon the sides for both its energy and food needs. Using this dependence, the co-prosperity sphere would boycott the Earth and not ship it food or energy, thus forcing a mass migration from Earth, resulting in the eventual collapse of the Federation. This plan does two things. First, it moves most, if not all, of humanity off of Earth and into space. Second, it destroys the Federation via economic warfare. If a country's populace moves and no longer exists, neither does the country. 
It would be dishonest to not bring this up, so I'm going to do it here. Full Frontal's reasoning, the leader of the sleeves, for this plan is less to do with bettering humanity or even space noids, and has more to do with being a spiteful prick to the people of Earth. Beyond that, there's no guarantee that this plan would work in the way it is portrayed, and if I'm being blunt, would in fact most likely lead to another full-on war in a similar vein to the One Year War. The Federation would never go out quietly, especially if those in charge stand to lose. With that said, however, this video isn't delving into what could have happened, but rather what the two factions wanted to have happened. Small difference in wording to be sure, however, the distinction is a critical one. Full Frontal may have been doing what he was doing for rather vindictive reasons. However, those who flocked to his cause did so because they believed in the message he was delivering. That message being the side co-prosperity sphere. Full Frontal's motivation doesn't detract from the message and the goals he laid out for his organization. Therefore, we're just going to examine the organizations themselves. At the start of the video, I stated that the Sleeves are the more pragmatic second coming of Ayuk. Now that we have context behind that statement, it's time to explain. Right off the bat, I have to point out how both groups have very similar goals. Excluding their initial ones, which were stepping stones for the rest of their plans, both Ayuk and the Sleeves wanted to change the government which ruled over the species, and they both wanted humanity to completely move off of Earth and live in space. The main difference between Ayug and the Sleeves, however, comes down to how they view the Earth Federation and how they view humanity's governmental body. Ayug believed the Federation could be changed and reformed into something better. The Sleeves, on the other hand, simply wanted it gone. They wanted it destroyed. A big part of this difference comes down to who makes up the bulk of each faction. Ayug may have had several members who used to be Zeon. However, the bulk was made up of former Federation personnel. The Sleeves, on the other hand, were almost exclusively made up of Xeon remnants. This slight difference is the basis for both groups' plans. The Sleeves believe, and dare I say understand, that the Federation is too large and will not relinquish its power. It's too corrupt to be changed, so it has to be destroyed. Ayug, on the other hand, doesn't see things this way, and believed they could change the system from the inside. This is important due to how it shapes both of the group's shared goal, moving humanity into space. The way Ayug was planning on moving humanity into space involved them getting control of the government through lawful means, elections, and winning over those who are already in office to their side. They were going to use the system and slowly move humanity into space. There are a ton of issues with this, such as the fact the Federation itself was terrified of new types. However, as I said before, we aren't examining what could have happened, only what they wanted to have happen. Ultimately, Ayug believed people would do the right thing. They were idealistic, a fact which essentially led to their destruction during Operation Maelstrom. The Sleeves, on the other hand, understanding the Federation would never change, decided to wage economic warfare with the side co-prosperity sphere as I mentioned earlier in the video. They knew this would make the lives of those who lived on Earth miserable. However, it was the only option that didn't involve war. The understanding people would suffer is what made the Sleeves the more pragmatic ones. And if it wasn't for the super robot nonsense in my real robot show, they could have very well pulled it off. The shared goals but different approaches of these two groups is why I believe the Sleeves have more in common with Ayug than any Xeon faction. When you break it down, Xeon tends to want domination and dominion over humanity. During the One Year War, Giren wanted control of all the sides and Earth. During Operation Stardust, Delaz, a Giren loyalist, wanted a rebirth of the Xeon from the One Year War. During the first Neo-Xeon War, Hamad wanted the creation of a state led by new types which had dominion over all of humanity. Admittedly, the second Neo-Xeon War is a whole other beast because it was essentially a really elaborate suicide by cop for Shar. However, it almost led to the Earth's destruction, which is pretty far off from what Ayug and the Sleeves wanted. To summarize, the Sleeves are the more pragmatic second coming of Ayug because they want the same goals, but understand that to achieve said goals, the Federation has to be destroyed, whereas Ayug was idealistic and believed the Federation could change. The Sleeves are more similar to Ayug than any other Xeon faction because they do not want dominion over humanity. They instead want to create a new state which can compete with Earth that isn't controlled by Xeon alone. They want to work with the other sides, not control them. But guys, that has been it for this video. Tell me what you thought down below. This, uh, 
the Gundam discussion stuff is always fun, at least for me. I will admit, I'm actually kind of running out of ideas, at least for the time being. So if you have any suggestions about sci-fi stuff, anime stuff, feel free to leave them down in the comments. I, uh, I have like two ideas banked, but I'm, I'm, I'm running out. So again, let me know what you want to see. Uh, I'm, there are no guarantees it'll be done, but the ideas are appreciated. So with that, guys, I've been Bufar101. I'll see all of you next time. Goodbye.